Hello, everyone. My name is Oliver Schneider from the University of Waterloo, and I'm presenting this work on behalf of my co-authors, Emmett Anwar and Tian Zheng Shi, to talk about the factors of haptic experience across multiple haptic modalities. To give away the ending, when we applied the haptic experience model to multiple modalities beyond vibrotactile, we found that some constructs were made, but some constructs changed. And so we suggest that there is a general structure of haptic experience related but not identical to modality-specific structures. In addition, we are developing a questionnaire, but it's not yet reliable. Haptics can improve experiences. Prior work has shown that mid-air tactile and vibrotactile feedback can augment movies to be more pleasant, unpredictable, and creative. Physical props and vibrotactile feedback can increase presence. Vibrotactile feedback can improve player experience in games. And motion seats can increase affective arousal via, uh, as measured via electrodermal activity. So this is great. But these metrics only tell us so much about the haptics and don't measure the experience of haptics itself. Currently, there is no established language for touch. Preference for something is limited to I like it or I don't like it without being able to express what you like about it. Hapticians report problems of communication and evaluation. A customer might come up to a haptician and say, hey, I want to make something feel variable, but I don't know what variable means. This haptician didn't know what it meant. And I don't know if the customer knew what it meant either. So there really is an impoverished language surrounding haptics and touch. Existing metrics target different domains or constructs. We have ways of measuring presence, affect, user experience, and related things, but we don't have a way to measure haptics. Finally, designers use small in-person studies to evaluate haptic experience, but this is costly and not scalable. These qualitative, qualitative methods are great, but it'd be nice to complement them with uh, quantitative methods. So our approach is to use the process of scale development. Scale development is a methodology used in social sciences to develop validated scales and to understand a phenomenon of interest. We started this process in a paper that we presented at CHI 2020 about defining haptic experience. In this, we did a literature review and interacted with both haptic novices and expert hapticians to develop a theoretical model of haptic experience. The main five dimensions that we found were harmony, does it fit with other senses? Autotelics, does it feel good and of itself? Realism, does it feel realistic? Immersion, do you feel immersed? And expressivity, is there a distinction between effects? You may notice some of these dimensions overlap related constructs, but together they form a multifaceted experience of haptics. We also defined haptic experience as a distinct set of quality criteria that are the most important considerations <clears throat> for technology that involves the sense of touch. We articulated both the hedonic experiential dimensions, which we've already talked about, and certain usability requirements, which are like established usability requirements in general user interfaces, but with a bit of a twist. We also were able to confirm the need for consistent and direct evaluation tools. Hapticians often use surveys, but direct applicability to haptics is low. It would be great to have something that you know, focuses on our needs. Evaluation methods often differ between hapticians. You know, everyone is building their own approach, and it's very hard to compare your haptic feedback, your device, with others, because everyone uses their own method. We also found that it is challenging to elicit useful language. A lot of people don't know what haptics is, so it's your challenge to get people to articulate feedback in ways that are useful to you. So we really confirm some of the challenges that are faced by people working with haptic technology. So this was the first step, doing the initial domain identification of haptic experience and developing initial items. We followed this up with work on measuring haptic experience, which was presented at World Haptics 2021. This work took the initial items that were developed from the Defining Haptic Experience paper and we iterated upon them to be able to refine them so they were ready to deploy in a scale. The final items were four or five items per construct. So for example, with immersion, the haptic feedback distracted me from the task. It might be one item answered on a one to five point Likert scale. You might also have, I felt engaged with the system due to the haptic feedback, or the haptic feedback helped me focus on the task. 
we did something similarly for the other constructs. For autotelvex, you know, the haptic feedback felt satisfying. And for realism, the haptic feedback felt realistic. And we had, uh, as well, all five constructs uh, measured with these different items. After deploying the questionnaire, uh, we did find that there was a five-factor model that closely resembled the initial proposed haptic experience model. Uh, so this was great. It really supplies some support for the idea that we have these five experiential dimensions. However, uh, it was deployed remotely and only with vibrotactile feedback. Uh, so there are some limitations with this finding. So that's great. We've got some initial model that we've proposed, and we were able to refine these items to a potential draft for a questionnaire. So this study is where we follow up. We look at factor analysis and scale evaluation with more modalities. Because the first study was really grounded in vibrotactile feedback with its reliance on novices, and the second study only worked with uh, vibrotactile experiences since it had to be done remotely. So let's talk about the current study. We administered a survey with five different devices with different modalities. For vibrotactile feedback, we used an Oculus Quest 2. For force feedback, we used a Haply and a Touch 3D. For mid-air haptics, we had an Ultraleap device. And for surface haptics, we had a Tanvis device. We then had the study take place in a campus coffee shop at the University of Waterloo, where people would interact with the device and then they would complete our 22-item questionnaire on uh, either their mobile phone or the provided laptop. And then we conducted exploratory factor analysis. We found that data was suitable for factor analysis. We had adequate sample size and all correlations checked out for all recommendations. And we then arrived at a four factor model. Our scree plot indicated there was somewhere between three and five factors. And so we iteratively tried several models, whichever was the most interpretable that also met our requirements, our criteria was the final model. So this final model ended up having only 11 of the 22 items after item reduction. So we had various criteria that this matched, uh, but it met all this criteria and it was the most interpretable of the models that had these criteria met. And this is the final model. You can read the paper for details, uh, but you can see that it arrived at a four, uh, four factors, realism, harmony, involvement, and expressivity, each of them with two or three items, and that was it. So the four, item, four factors that emerged uh, were realism and expressivity, which were very similar to the originally proposed haptic experience model, and which overlapped, uh, the loadings overlapped considerably with what we found with vibrotactile feedback. We saw harmony emerge again, but this one's notable because it was all reverse coded or negative statements. So the haptic feedback felt disconnected from the rest of the experience. It was out of place. It was distracting me. And so we find that harmony isn't measured directly, but rather we can measure if there is a break of harmony. And if you don't measure that, we then uh, would suggest that ha harmony is taking place. Finally, we did not see immersion or autotelix, but we did see another factor, involvement. This is the least defined one, uh, factor with two items. I like having haptic feedback as part of the experience, and I felt engaged with the system due to the haptic feedback. You might know that this overlaps other prior uh, models um, where involvement is a sense of you know, meaningful connection uh, or attention focused on the subject of interest. So we then conducted a follow-up study with an independent sample, uh, same methodology. And uh, the short answer is everything checked out except for the reliability scores. So this means that we are one number shy of reliable questionnaire even though it does give strong evidence for the structure given this data set. There are some limitations with this work, of course. Uh, there's potential novelty effects and social desirability uh, bias. The sample consisted only of Uwaterloo students, um, and only five haptic devices were used in the study, and there are other modalities that we could also add. So the key takeaways are the extracted model was different from the vibrotactile model. We only had 11 items load rather than 22. We did not see immersion or autotelix emerge, but we did see involvement emerge. Evidence supports this four-factor model. We did have confirmatory factor analysis that resulted in the same model. So with our collected data set, we do have uh, pretty good evidence that this is a decent uh, structure 
to explain haptic experience with multiple modalities. Unfortunately, our current item set is not reliable. We need another round of item development to produce a robust questionnaire. So here's the final takeaways again. And thank you so much for your attention.